You know, uh, the summer's almost half over. You know that, right? <laughs> I'm telling, I'm telling you, this is going going by way too fast, and uh, we just wanted to slow down. So today, we're just taking a moment, just to take a breather, and enjoy the morning, enjoy the day. We've been doing our series on uh, the one day how God meets us in that one day. Jesus comes, and, and when you're connected to that one day, your life, your life can be changed. Everything can change in a moment of time. How many of you remember a day where your life was changed? In a moment. It only took God a moment to do what, for years, we had been struggling to achieve in our own strength in our own ability. If you're here today and you haven't had that one day experience with Christ, today may be your day. Isn't that good? Today can be your day. The scripture says that today is a day of salvation. I think if I was stranded on an island and uh, I would, I'd be wondering, is today the day? Is today the day? Is today the day? I'll get saved. Well, I'm telling you, today is the day. We've been going through a number of portions of Scripture, learning about the, the times when Jesus, when Jesus entered the scene, lives were changed, people were changed. And uh, when you have that one day experience, we're learning that it's not only good for yourself, but it's good to be able to pass it on to others. You have that experience so that you can pass it forward. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I'm passing it forward. I'm going to pass it forward. And the best churches in the world are, are, are churches that assume that every Sunday is somebody's first Sunday because... Every Sunday could be somebody's first encounter with Jesus and somebody's first life change, a life change. So we show up because he shows up. We show up because he's here. We don't just do these exercises in song and worship and, 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 and kind of uh, spontaneous music. We don't do that because we're particularly all that skilled, even though there's great skill. We do it because it's our way of responding to God, what is already in our hearts, and we're acknowledging God's good, what God has done for us and in us and what he's going to do through us. So we respond to him out of the grace that he's already given us. And each one of you here today have that chance to receive that grace. So it's a good thing. And uh, it's, it, we're just going to keep going deeper because we realize the more we, we look at the scripture and we look at the life of Jesus, the more we realize lives are impacted for the better when people come encounter him. So today we're going to learn from John chapter 11. I'm just going to read to you for a few, uh, probably a minute here, a bit of this portion of scripture, just so you get the thumbnail of where we're going in this, in this lesson. It says this, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. So Lazarus' sisters are Mary and Martha. Uh, so the sisters sent word to Jesus. They said, Lord, the one you love is sick. And when he heard this, Jesus said, the sickness will not end in death. No, it's for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two days. And then he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. And they said, but Rabbi, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you're going back. And Jesus said, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by the world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. And after he had said this, he went to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. And his disciples said, well, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. And Jesus said, speaking of his own death, and that Jesus would go to sleep. Three days later, he would rise. 
But his disciples thought he meant a natural sleep. So he told them plainly, no, okay, get to, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> That's a big difference, hey, between sleeping and dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe. Let's go to him now. And then Thomas said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. This is a great, good old Thomas, eh? <laughs> Thomas, renowned for just, ah, uh, we might as well die with Jesus. And Thomas, the doubting Thomas, where's the nail hands? Where's the spear in the side? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We receive your word with grateful hearts. And we uh, embrace it today as a word, not just for someone else, but for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have you ever had someone who has uh, requested something of you that was really, really difficult? Based on like an unreasonable expectation placed on you, put on you. You didn't ask for it, it came. And, and it was something that ultimately you shouldn't have needed to fulfill. Perhaps you were a child in the middle of a divorce and someone's saying, you know what, you need to choose. Or there's some ex expectations placed on you. You look back at your history, realizing you're a young child, asked to take care of your siblings. Pressures that are put on you that you weren't asked to fulfill. And it leaves you feeling that they should know better. They should have known better than to make the request in the first place. A request that places you in an uncomfortable place, an uncomfortable position. Now, I have children. My life is full of these requests. <laughs> Un unreasonable requests. Can we stay up till 12 o'clock? No. Can, like, very basic. Can we eat candy for breakfast? No, you can't eat candy. Can we have sugar straws? No, you can't have sugar straws. It's like a meal supplement. You can't just have that. Oh, can we jump off the roof into the hot tub? No, you can't jump off the roof into the hot tub. Like, these are things like unreasonable requests. I took a, we went up uh, quadding the other day, and we went up to this uh, top of Little White, and it was a great trip, you know, kind of going up through these washed out roads and made our way to the very top. And the kids jump out of the back of the quad. They run into this cabin, open the doors. And I don't know who does this, but there's like a couch and a stove and, you know, drinks on the counter. And um, there's a TV there. I don't know what they were thinking. Like, with the sign, don't break the TV, it still works. I don't know who, what signal they're getting or what's going on, but we found this cabin. It was pretty cool. There's a dart board and a pile of darts on the ground, and the kids are like picking them up. And we walk outside and we start seeing rabbits running around, rabbits. And the first question my son asks me is, can we throw uh, darts at the rabbits? <laughs> Uh, and they're just like, they're just like anxious, like, Dad, please? You know, and you turn your back and then you see a dart go launch at this rat and the rabbit, you know, jumps around and we're like, no, you can't throw darts at rabbits. Like, you can't do that. You'll injure a rabbit. But Dad, can we? No, you, can I throw a dart at you? No, because it will injure you. It'll hurt you. You don't hurt a bunny. It's beautiful little bunny, right? Unreasonable requests, but they're full of them. And sometimes, you know, you get used to it. And the point is here that when it comes to unreasonable requests, I'm not God. We aren't God. We have an overall problem responding to requests, period. Deep down, I don't like requests. I get a phone call from my dad. Hey, Brody, how's it going? I'm like, hey, dad. This is, he's going to just celebrate and tell me how much he loves me. And, you know, all. hey, Brody, I was thinking, yeah, what were you thinking? You're going to do something, you know, going salmon fishing or what, what are we going to do, dad? You know, I'm excited. 
can you come over and help me put my sprinklers on, my irrigation lines? And I'm like, you know, I'm like, Dad, I don't want to do that. Like, I, down, deep down, I'm like, yeah, I'll come over and I'll do it. Dad, can you, Brody, can you come over and plug in my printer like get the drivers working for my, how many of you have asked your kids for that to help, okay? When it comes to requests, can you do this initially, like your initial response is an immediate, I don't want to fulfill this request. Hey, you've got a truck. Can you help me move? No, <laughs> busy on that week. I'm busy. I'm going somewhere. We're on holidays. You've got this. You've got this opportunity. Can you help? We have a problem. We have limitations where God doesn't have limitations. And that's the good news. We have limited ability. We have limited resource. We, have, we are limited literally by natural laws. I cannot stay up 24 hours a day. I can't keep, you know, keep track seven days a week. We're limited. But God, on the other hand, will respond to unreasonable requests. Turn to your neighbor, give him a high five. God will respond to unreasonable requests. Even requests that are misinformed. Mary Martha, hey, can you come? Your friend is sick. No, he's dead. Like Jesus' issue was, listen, I'm going to stay here two more days. It could be four. It could be longer. But dead is dead. Like Lazarus is dead. I'll come when I come. It's not going to be any better that I go right away. And I go in a week's time. Okay? It'll just... He's dead. I don't like unreasonable requests. God loves them. That's why I'm not God. (laughs) That's why you should be thankful I'm not God. But when is the last time that you yourself had an unreasonable request that passed your lips? When have you made a drawn God that where somewhere there was a place where it frightened you? Not because of fear, but you had a hint of concern that, man... This is going to require a little bit of trust. This is going to require something different. Every day, God is doing things that are just amazing. Every day, people around the globe are drawing on God to take their heart, make it new, change their person, change change their life, change their affections, change their attention, change their direction. You can ask him. He welcomes it. He loves that request. You can't, you, there's not a request when it comes to your life that you can't ask him, God, will you love me if this happened? Will you still love me because I did this? God will love you. God will embrace you. God will tell you, come on in. Come on close. I have to give it to Mary and Martha. They had the audacity the gall, the nerve, whatever you may call it, to call Jesus out on some pretty difficult requests. It wasn't a challenge. It was a call out. It was like they're saying, hey, I saw you. You helped out with the blind man who was blind, and he recovered. You helped with a paralytic, and he got better. You helped with other people who weren't well. We are requesting that you drop what you're doing now, Stop and come directly to us. And first, there were two problems. First, the problem was coming to her. The second problem was that he was dead. And it's interesting that the disciples had more concern with the first problem. Coming to him. Because people are always issue beyond the circumstance. When it comes to it, it's, it's people. And they'll actually do whatever it takes to, like, to shut you down from actually going to do it. The first concern was, hey, didn't they just a little while ago pick up stones and want to crush you? Didn't they try and kill you? And you're wanting to walk back into that lion's den. You're wanting to go back to the place that we just left so that you can die there. And it was, you know, the first thing they're trying to do, do you have to go? And he says, well, you know, Lazarus, he's asleep. Well, then you'll get better. 
Like, the first thing you'll do is you'll have people around you when you announce an unreasonable request from God, they'll try to get you to stop that request. Shut it down. They'll give you an excuse why you shouldn't go, why you shouldn't take on that, why you shouldn't believe God for bigger things, why you shouldn't believe God for that dream, believe God for the the best of the best. And they'll try to pull back. And Jesus' friends, his community of faith, his believing buddies were saying, don't go. And then eventually they said they'll go, that they might die with him, right? (laughs) Well, we might as well go so that we can at least die with him. He doesn't have to die alone. It's like, what great men of faith around him, (laughs) Jesus. I seriously think Jesus like carried that team everywhere he went. He was just like carrying them. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. We can do it. When it comes to these requests, we have to see that faith matters. Faith matters. Trusting in God, that God can do unreasonable things with us and in our lives. And, and God, at the end of the day, it uses these moments so that we don't get the glory, but so that he gets the glory in those moments. So Jesus gets there, and the story continues. On his arrival, Jesus finds that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. This isn't good. This is like being bad to worse. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Martha stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But I know that even now God will, even now God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though he die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe in this? Question of faith. Yes, Lord, she replied, I believe you're the Messiah, the Son of God who's come to the world. And she said this, she went and called her sister Mary, the teacher's here. And he's asking for you. And Mary heard this. She got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. And when the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforted her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. And when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here earlier, my brother would not have died. By the time they got to Lazarus, he was dead. Four days dead. One of the scriptures says, he stunketh. He was was dead. (laughs) And Jesus wasn't like an hour late or a day late. He was four days late. And, And it's not good, but the bitterness in this moment, or the betterness in this moment, was a choice for Mary and Martha. They could either get bitter at Jesus or they could get better with Jesus. And the interesting thing is that Martha ran out to see Jesus. And I don't know what's more concerning. Martha running at you, jumping at your feet, saying, listen, you're late. (laughs) You just don't want to be late for a woman right in the first place. (laughs) Number two... You've you got two types of people. If you're late, you can walk in the house and they're waiting for you at the door. Where were you? Or you can be late and like Mary, she just didn't even leave the house. She just gave Jesus the cold shoulder. Mm, Jesus is here. I'm not even going out to see him. He's four days late. Way to treat your friend, Jesus. And there's this moment of bitterness, being bitter, or being better. This story is not about Lazarus. Lazarus is dead. 
this whole character story is not, he doesn't even have a part to play. Eventually, spoiler alert, he comes out of the grave wrapped in like linen and there's no description of what he looks like or anything. That's the extent of his role in that story. This story is about Mary and Martha. This story is about what you do when God disappoints you. What do you do when you were trusting God for something better and you didn't get it and now you have a choice to get bitter? What are you going to do? Obviously, you don't care. Obviously, he wasn't of that much concern to you. Obviously, we aren't very important. Like, give Jesus some credit. He's literally walked through a community where people are wanting to stone him dropped what he was doing to actually get to them and still they're giving him grief like and i don't know if i would have been as patient as jesus someone comes running to me you're late and i'd be like yeah well you try and get through people who are trying to stone you and kill you and everywhere you go demons are coming out like it's <laughs> it's a messy place i'm i'm guyer's best I could. I still love you. I still care for you. Mary, Martha, Lazarus. You guys are all close to me. Well, you know, and just offense with Jesus. And that moment of offense, what do you do? You know, maybe you have a a moment of clarity and think, you know, God, in all of his wisdom, Jesus, who knows all these things, would know better to come or may have a reason. Maybe approach him with a, Jesus, what is your purpose for coming while he's dead? Like, he's already died. I humbly present my (laughs) concerns to you. I don't know why this, this particular woman, not all women, this woman did that. She and her sister, because four days of bitterness, the root getting deeper and deeper. How many of you know, if you don't go to your garden and like work your garden weekly, daily, and you wait for those roots to go down deep, those roots get harder and harder to pull out. Four days of churning and bittering. And it went deeper and deeper until finally she just unloaded on Jesus. Our tendency is to judge God harder than we judge ourselves or even other people. And definitely, um, God became the, the dartboard and has become the dartboard for the world. He's our pin cushion. He's an easy target to blame. You know, every time something goes wrong, people, oh my God, like, what did God have to do with that? They swear, they use the name of Jesus. It's God's problem, really God's issue. The other day, I was, I was Canada Day weekend. A bunch of guys were getting together at the house. We were all having a great time, uh, hanging out together at a barbecue and good food and games and the whole bit. And my brother-in-law is there, Nathan, and he's like, hey, we're leaving the house. He's like, I need a ride home and being the good bro I am. I'm like, yeah, no, no problem. It's out of my way, but whatever, you know, I'll take you home. So I drive him home, roll up to his house, drop him off come around the corner onto Springfield, turn the corner, start driving up towards Black Mountain, my house. And I see a car coming at me the other way. And this car coming at me the other way was was, uh, driving really slow, but it was like 11.30 at night. And I'm like, what's wrong? You know, and I just kept going. It is Canada Day, you know, whatever. And all of a sudden, you know, those flashing lights come on and right beside me, like right beside, they drove right, flashing lights coming in, I hit the brakes. And then all of a sudden they turn around and I realize, okay, they want to pull me over. (laughs) I pull over. A lady comes out and really nicely comes to my window. Sir, hi. Your your car really lurched forward. I've got a trainee in the vehicle and you can imagine, wow, you, 
You were going a little fast there, weren't you, sir? I was going 60 in a 50 zone. I was going 20% over. <laughs> she made it very clear to tell me that. You were going 20% over the speed limit? I'm like, I was going 60 in a 50 zone. And so she's there, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna have to ticket you. Like, have you been drinking? To, it is a long weekend. If you hadn't, no, I haven't been drinking. No. All this, I, get, I give her my stuff, my, all my papers, and I'm just sitting there and I'm just sweating on the, I'm like, I haven't, I told her, I haven't had a ticket ever. <laughs> And she goes, well, I couldn't run your, you know, is this, she's looking at the car, is this blue? It, it says it's blue on the insurance, but it looks gray. Uh, I'm not sure about this. We might have to, I'm like, it's blue. Trust me, it was my grandma's old car. It's a baby <laughs> blue. It's like robin egg blue. Like this, this is a blue car. Okay. And she comes back and gives me a ticket. And I, I gave me the lowest ticket she could, and her trainees got the flashlight going through, looking at my elk salami platter I'd brought to the, <laughs> wondering what it was, focusing her mag light on it and unfocusing. And to t honestly, she said, have a good day. I put my stuff in the, in the glove box. I got in the vehicle, I started driving, and you know what the first words of my mouth were? Why God? The whole way up the hill, it was like, God, why did you allow this? I, what about that 10 kilometers over the speed limit rule? <laughs> We've talked about this. We know that that exists. It's like a natural law. Where is this grace? How, how, how are you going to explain this ticket to my wife? Like, God. <laughs> What's the deal? And do you know what's interesting about this situation? I immediately started blaming God. Was God driving the car? Did God know the, did God say, Brody, you know what? You should go a little faster. You should push it and get home. Was God, did I break the rules? Yes. And it literally, it took me a while. I got home. I told my wife, you know, I came to a, I was almost in this near-death accident. <laughs> my, my life, I, I'm so grateful to be home. By the way, I got this ticket. Like, <laughs> and, 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 oh, thank God. Oh, it was only a ticket. And she's thanking God. I'm like, what's wrong with God today? Like, have I not served you? Do I not know you? Do I not? Oh, my goodness. Bitter or better. It's our choice. We have a choice. The most challenging place to believe and to believe is in God's goodness during times of your suffering. Yeah. Suffering is real, people. Not, uh, not every one day experience is a great experience. And I think we do the gospel a disfavor when we only say, you know, when we serve God, everything's going to be on the upside. It's going to be on the upside when in reality, our whole faith is based around someone dying. His whole message to us was, you're going to die. The world will hate you and despise you. But you've got to bless, and it's like, oh, the blessing's coming, your enemies. <laughs> Those are the people we're called to bless. Our enemies. Is this going to get hard when and we say, you know what, Jesus, you know, Christianity, our faith is on this up and up. Yeah, it's all great, but it's hard. Doesn't mean it's easy. Suffering is hard. The suffering is real. How many of you have felt suffering? Come on. It's real. And the story... It's about how we respond when we suffer and how we come to that question mark in our life where it says, is God good? And we say, yes, God is good. Yes, sometimes that's a message of faith. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you've got all things under control. I, I'm, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to serve your mission. It's not about me. It's about you. 
And this reversal happens where my eyes get taken off me and get placed on him. Why don't I have the money, the recreation, the holidays, the car, the clothes? We all have a choice to become bitter or better. I work just as hard as the other guy, and yet I don't have as many things. I don't have as much. I, I'm just as faithful. I'm working just as hard. I was a friend, and you could see Mary and Martha. Didn't Jesus love us? Weren't we close to him? Wasn't he a friend of Lazarus? Didn't he care? And they're running through this emotion. And I'm sure it became a place of fatigue to a place where they just didn't even want to even see Jesus when he came. We get these feelings, the feelings of dreams dying, feelings of business plans dying, relational hopes dying. And in those times, we have to question God. God, are you good? Yes. My hope is in you. My hope continues to be in you. Mary and Martha had what I call a position problem. A position problem. When we realize that Jesus isn't there to serve us, but that we're there to serve him, our position becomes much more clear. God isn't here to serve us. You can't just call out to Jesus, Jesus, do this for me. We're here to serve him. Jesus is, the question is, is not, is God on my side? But the question is, are you on God's side? It's not about God loving me. It's about me loving him. It's not about what God can do for me on a Sunday morning. It's about, God, what is your mission for me? How can I serve you? What can I do? Uh, it was awesome this last week. I was able to hear about some of the, uh, this, uh, um, this organization in Kelowna where they're helping out in a number of the schools uh, putting breakfast together for kids that are uh, come to school hungry in the morning. One out of every five kids come to school without breakfast. And in the Native community, one out of every two kids are going to school without breakfast in the mornings. And the point is, is that the ministry is this, is like if we can feed a child and get them attentive, and they're not distracted because of their hunger pain, we can feed them, then they can start learning. And if they start learning, they get confident in their learning ability. And out of their confidence, they can pursue good jobs and, and good employment. And one of the schools in the Okanagan here, uh, Pearson Elementary, went from, uh, they said, if I get this right, a 40% illiteracy rate. That's high down to 19% just by feeding kids in the morning. It was quite, quite a ministry. Like, I thought, this is incredible what you can do. But the question isn't, if, if you would go to God and say, God, what are you going to do about this tragedy? The kids go to school without breakfast, hungry. Their attention span is weak. They're, they're, they're just... They're just making it to school on time. Um, prayer won't help that prayer. God, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about this? The question should be, God, what can I do to serve the children in this community and feed those who are hungry? Yeah. The prayer can't be about God. If we live our lives on that position, we're always going to either be disappointed or feel like, like God is disappointing us. Instead, like, what's God doing for the world? The question is, what are you doing to serve God's mission in the world? We don't, we don't do these things out of the ambition or the push out of our own, our, God's heart, but we do it out of ours. So in this story of Lazarus, Jesus shares one of the most powerful messages. He says this, Whoever believes in me will receive spiritual life that even sp physical death can never take away. And I want to close today with this message that death 
has been robbed of his power. Jesus came so that we could have life. And the scripture says to have life with abundance. The enemy comes to rob, kill, steal, destroy. And God wants us to be the type that can call out to him and actually move from death to life. And we do that by placing our hope in him. Our hope, our confidence, our ability in him. And when we do that, the scripture says that God is faithful to hear us. And he's faithful to forgive us. And he's faithful to lead us into a new start, into a new life. So for many of you in here today, I believe God has either called you or is calling you. And I want to take a moment, if you would just bow your heads and close your eyes with me. If at some point in this, in this uh, message today, you heard, that, you heard that language where you yourself have been disappointed with God, and instead of getting better through the process, you became bitter. You turned on God and you said, God, you know, where are you? Where were you? I just want to pray for you today. I want to pray that your heart once again becomes soft towards him and towards his, uh, his movement in your life and where he wants to move you. Because God does want to move us. He wants to move us from death to life, from hopelessness to hope, from anxiety and despair to peace and life. So Father, today you said that if we believe in you, and we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he's been raised from the dead, that we would be saved. Your grace is sufficient for us every day. And today, Father, we give you opportunity to step into that. You've given us opportunity to step into that grace. You came to earth so that we could walk in freedom. You came to earth so that we could have that grace even now. The moment between you and God at this time. Some of you have been maybe running from God. Perhaps you've been trying to hide from him. Hide from the reality of the decisions you've got to make. You think you can maybe earn the love of God. When his grace has been freely given to you, he loves you just as you are. He's not mad at you. He cares for you. He wants you with him, and salvation happens when we call on his name. It's as simple as calling on the name of Jesus. So we're going to pray a prayer today. And for the benefit of those who may be praying this prayer for the first time, I'm going to ask everyone to pray it together. Maybe you're going to pray this prayer just as an assurance for yourself. But you can pray it along with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you today a sinner in need of a Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to this earth and dying for my sin. I believe... God raised you from the dead. And I believe that I can be set free. I accept your mercy. I accept your grace. I'm choosing today to humble myself and follow you for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Father, we know that our salvation is secure in you. And we thank you, Father, for loving us and caring for us and cherishing us. And even when things look bad, Father, you are there and you're on mission. Amen. God bless you. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace today. God bless you. Have a great Sunday afternoon.